Hey, this is Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan. As many of you probably saw, I recently released a video giving my response, my reaction to Michael Arnstein's recent video where he accused a outed Duran Ryder and Freely as being Cold Stone food addicts. And I thought it gave a pretty articulate explanation in that video of what addiction is and how there's really no such thing as being addicted to steamed potatoes or rice. And more importantly, I wanted to get that issue out there so we could just stop this whole, you know, accusing people of, of such things. It's, it doesn't do any good. So, of course, a hardcore um, raw foodist writes me, and we'll just say his name is um, Sexist Yogi. I don't want to give him any more publicity. He says, spoken like a true addict, Ryan. I experience withdrawal and detox after a single starchy meal, and so do my friends who can't pull themselves away from raw till four because they are addicted. I'm a cooked food addict, and just like Michael, I will always be because the first 21 years of my life involved cooked food. Cooked food is probably the most hardest addiction to break, blah, blah, blah. See, he's speaking like cooked food addiction is something real, something that actually exists in this world. So let's see what science has to say about the reality and truth of cooked food addiction. Well, let's look up caffeine addiction on Google and look, tons of solid results. Wikipedia talks about caffeine addiction, WebMD, Smithsonian, MedicineNet. It seems beyond dispute, right, that there's science out there showing clearly that there's a caffeine addiction. But for cooked food addiction, instead of such authoritative solid results, you just have people on blogs here, raw food blogs, you know, just guys like me just saying stuff. There's no science out there anywhere here. Look, there's nothing showing that there's any such thing as cooked food addiction, other in the minds of some bloggers. All they can give us, these extreme raw foodists, are, are some personal testimonial. But personal testimonial, you know, that's not enough to, to define what the proper human diet is. It's like personal testimony is what you give if you just saw the Loch Ness Monster. You can't give, you know, scientific proof. So you just tell people what you saw. That's what these raw foodists are doing. The strength of their argument is the same strength or weakness, I should say, as someone who just saw the Loch Ness Monster and is trying to convince you about it. But let's take a look at Dr. Neil Greger of nutritionfacts.org. He, his job is to sift through all the articles that come out about plant-based nutrition and, and, and he makes videos about them. So a lot of raw foodists will say, okay, well, when you cook food, you toxify it. All the nutritional value is, is gone. You're pretty much eating poison. I mean, adding steamed broccoli. Well, there's some people that would argue that rice and steamed broccoli is toxic to the human body. Okay, well, that, I'd love to see that data. <laughs> I want toxic broccoli data. Send it my way. My contact information is on the website, nutritionfacts.org. Look, maybe I just happened to miss... The toxic rice and broccoli, you know, yeah. you know, so send me the lentils are bad for you data and we'll compare it to my lentils are good for you data and make up your own mind. But, yeah. I mean, you know, you don't have a preconceived notion and then go out and look in the science to back up your opinion. Right. You go into the science, you find out what's there and then you change your diet to reflect the science, not the other way around. So if anyone on this planet would know about toxic broccoli and toxic steamed rice, it would be Dr. Greger. Again, his job is to sort through all the articles that come out on nutrition, specifically vegan, plant-based nutrition, and know what's going on. He knows of no such thing. So again, this claim by this certain kind of core, hardcore raw food is, is bogus, has no scientific basis. Instead, it, it is, again, like the Loch Ness Monster. It's woo-woo. And let's see what Dr. Greger says about killing food once you heat it up. There are some nutrients that are heat sensitive, like uh, you know vitamin C folate can be destroyed. You know, fifteen percent can be destroyed in broccoli. Uh, you know, if you microwave broccoli for two minutes, you destroy about fifteen percent of the vitamin C. Mm -hmm. So then you'd have to eat six florets of steamed broccoli to get the amount of vitamin C found in five florets of raw broccoli. But if you don't like raw broccoli, you like steamed broccoli, and you're going to eat no raw broccoli, then obviously, right, whatever way will get you to stuff more fruits and vegetables in your face, that's the way you should eat them. However, you like them. 
I thought that was pr a pretty funny claim by Dr. Greger that raw broccoli, you're probably not going to eat that much because it's kind of rough. But once you heat food, I'd rather steam it than microwave it. But yeah, you're probably going to eat more. And therefore, strangely, for um, the, from the raw food point of view, you're going to actually get more nutrition because you're actually eating more. You're getting more plant food into your body, which goes to show there's no such thing as the raw food diet or the raw till four diet. It's how you individually construct and compose your diet and what you eat. So so as I, I want to just you know make sure I'm not picking on any raw foodists here. I mean, most raw foodists I know are lovely, open-minded people. Like, like say Evan Rock, Chris Kindle, um, Mike Vlasity. You know, these are open-minded people, good attitudes, and I never see them finger pointing, saying that you know what I'm doing and others are doing that are not 100% raw is somehow bad or whatever. I'm just talking about a few minute you know a minute portion that are have this like religious fervor, either with us or against against us, you know, and let's just kind of lay all that to rest, guys. As I show, there's no science backing the claim that eating cooked food is addictive. There's none. It's on the same level as claiming you saw the Loch Ness Monster. And likewise, this whole claim of cooking food, heating food up destroys its nutrients, again, nonsense. A little bit gets destroyed, but not to, enough to significantly give you nutritional deficiencies, assuming you're eating enough calories. So that's why we always say, carb the F up. Eat a lot of food, eat till you're full. So. Let's lay off this war, guys, all right? I don't have a war. I'm cool with it all, and I want you to be cool with it all. Even if you still have problems inside, just keep it to yourselves. Don't call us addicts, because there's no basis in that. All right, guys? None. So um, that's it for this episode. I have hopefully laid this to rest. I'm going to move on to other topics. Uh, and Angie's got two episodes in the works, too. There's a recipe one in there, too. So. Um, uh, comment down below. Tell me what you think about this whole issue of cooked food addiction. Do you believe there's any validity to it? Because I cannot find any. And just don't give me testimonial once again. If you do, you might as well just talk about the Loch Ness Monster because that's how much weight I'm going to give it. And if you like what you're hearing, subscribe up above for more from us here at Happy Healthy Vegan. And as I said, guys, keep it carved. Keep it carved. <laughs>